Thank you guys for uh, joining us. Uh, so, um, uh, hi, this is Nan. Uh, um, I'm a data scientist from uh, Seven Bridges Genomics. And uh, actually, I have a background in statistics. So, uh, maybe I'll, today I will talk about something that's maybe less main mainstream at DockerCon. Um, it's about uh, reproducible uh, report generation and uh, containerization. Um, so it all starts when I was still in uh, graduate school. Uh, graduate school. Um, I have to do a lot of homework. And all these assignments usually require you to um, uh, write some program in Python or R to analyze some data sets and uh, write up a report and submit it to the teacher, uh, to the professor. And um, um, so uh, at first, uh, everything was OK. I just read the program and produced the uh, figures uh, using the program and uh, getting all the outputs and write it up uh, and submit it to the f professor. Uh, but after a while, uh, there's a bigger issue appeared. Um, so I usually f could find some uh, you know, minor mistakes being made at the beginning of the report. So I have to uh, fix the problem in the program and uh, re remake all the figures and outputs uh, from the beginning of the report and recopy and repaste everything again uh, to make the report uh, correct. So um, that's a really uh, big issue. Um, if you um, look at these things, at a higher level, um, it could really be summarized into these two words, reproducible research. Um, so reproducible research is about how to make your experimental or um, computational workflow uh, really easy, could be really easily uh, re replicated by the other independent researchers. And this is an issue um, that's haunting the uh, uh, Academic research community uh, for a long time, and uh, and I was lucky. I uh, there was a, a new package coming out uh, back then in 2012 named the Neater, and accompanying uh, and with this new um, document uh, document format named the R Markdown, which basically um, means you can write your report in the Markdown uh, format, and you can insert your uh, code chunks into the uh, um, Markdown report. And Neater here will help you uh, evaluate all these code chunks and uh, embed all the figures and outputs of the code chunks into the final PDF or HTML report for you automatically. So if you change something at the beginning of your program, then Everything you just uh, um, fix the prog uh, fix the problem in your R Markdown document, uh, which could be a really dynamic uh, process, and you just recompile the uh, report using Neater, and this will solve the reproducible uh, um, reporting problem at some level, and this um, these two uh, things only solve the problem. Uh, at a certain level, it doesn't guarantee that the others uh, could really um, uh, reproduce or um, remake your report, um, since uh, there might be some, you know, uh, package dependencies, system dependencies uh, in your uh, report and in your system, which others couldn't, you know, uh, really um, uh, couldn't really. Uh, uh, Make them available in their systems. So that's a partial um, problem uh, being solved. Uh, but we still made a lot of pro progress using these two uh, things. And uh, after I joined the Assembly Bridges, um, there I found that uh, reproducibility isn't uh, isn't only an issue that's been haunting uh, academia uh, for many years. It is also a huge concern uh, in Industrial applications. Uh, for example, uh, the Cancer Genomics Cloud 
uh, we have built for the National Cancer Institute as a cloud pilot project uh, for analyzing uh, the 2.5 petabytes of cancer genomics data on the cloud. And we have uh, contributed uh, more than 200 uh, auto, highly automated workflows and bioinformatic tools for analyzing these data. And uh, uh, to achieve that, we actually made a lot of technological and uh, pr product innovations uh, to support that. For example, uh, we built our uh, own uh, domain-specific language named uh, uh, Common Workflow Language for uh, for users to uh, wrap their own bioinformatics tools or workflows and uh, execute them uh, um, in a fully reproducible fashion. And uh, um, uh, all these things are based on uh, Docker. And uh, um, using Docker, we have made this available. Uh, but these things also uh, only solves uh, a part of the problem, which is you can have a reproducible system environment for doing this analysis. However, um, um, there's, no, um, there's no support for creating a very beautiful report for that. So we were thinking, is it possible for us to really combine the best of the two worlds together? And the answer is yes for us. And Lifter is our answer. Uh, so Lifter is an R package uh, we have been building uh, since 2015. Um, in one sentence, uh, Lifter uses Docker, uh, Docker container to render your R markdown reports with Nitter. So um, in that way, we combine the, the two worlds together and for you to make a persistent reproducible report. And um, <clears throat> so the whole flow of Lifter is really simple. Uh, the first part um, of creating a persistent reproducible report would be uh, adding your uh, system dependencies and package dependencies, package dependencies of your report uh, in the header uh, of your report, which is uh, some very basic metadata, uh, which only takes a couple of minutes. And then you use Lifter. Uh, Lifter will generate a Docker file uh, for your report automatically um, by extracting the met met essential metadata from the header of your report. And then it will build the image based on this Docker file, start a container, and then render a report, PDF report or HTML report uh, for you and getting you the, the output. And uh, after that, you can also uh, maybe push the image to our Docker registry and also uh, maybe uh, share your Docker file on GitHub, uh, which, will, which will really make it really easy to um, um, give you the uh, operating system level of reproducibility and persistency for your uh, dynamic document. And here is a very small example of uh, um, dockerizing a uh, very complex uh, workflow uh, and also a uh, uh, workflow document, which is RNA sequencing data analysis. Uh, so basically, RNA, se RNA sequencing is a biotechn biotechnology for measuring the expression of thousands of genes simultaneously uh, by sequencing. So um, by, comparing, by comparing the um, gene expressions of tumor samples and normal samples, we can potentially find uh, the uh, uh, maybe cancer driver genes um, uh, using this technology. And uh, actually, terabytes and terabytes of RNA sequencing data are being generated every day, and hundreds of computational tools and workflows are being developed for analyzing these type of data. And uh, that's, that would be a huge challenge for us, which is basically, um, so your data is evolving dynamically, and your uh, an analysis tools are also evolving. So how can we make that uh, uh, really persistent? Uh, how can we make the, uh, um, uh, uh, 
how can we make the um, um, such reports or re uh, make sure that such reports are reproducible through time, uh, being persistent and reproducible. So here's the uh, link to the uh, uh, document example uh, we are seeing here. So if you're interested, please uh, just visit the link. And uh, uh, to save some time, I just uh, skip to the uh, um, demo part. Uh, so the first step of, um, as I said, it's just uh, adding some uh, essential metadata to the report. So here we have the uh, um, uh, system dependencies and uh, our package dependencies uh, for uh, running and compiling uh, this report uh, here, uh, which will only take maybe three minutes for you uh, to add. A second step will be simply uh, using lifter the lift function to generate the Docker file. And we can see, uh, we can inspect the Docker file here and see if everything is okay. The third step will be simply uh, containerize and render uh, this uh, report uh, using Docker. And um, uh, essentially, if, uh, if there's some, if you have something changed in your report um, and you want to uh, recompile this report. Um, the Docker, uh, the um, cache, the layers of the image will be used, which will save you a lot of time uh, for doing that. So uh, after you're getting the report, you can just uh, um, push it to Docker registry um, for persistent storage. And um, <clears throat> so uh, Lifter is only a very first step of uh, exploring this um, uh, direction of making everything, um, particularly computational things, reproducible. Uh, and um, we actually can do uh, many uh, interesting things based on uh, this kind of um, ideas. For example, uh, we can um, create a cloud-based service for um, uh, containerizing, for containerization and rendering your dynamic documents and uh, help people uh, to really ultimately uh, democratize the uh, creation and sharing of such uh, reproducible reports. And thank you so much uh, for joining us. And if you're interested, uh, please visit lifter.me. Lifter and uh, please also feel free to uh, contribute uh, pull requests and the uh, lifter is licensed under GPL, so feel free to um, contribute code and talk to me if you're interested. Thank you.